Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY and today we're working on a beer dispensing system. This carries glycol and it's a chiller. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Today we're working on a beer dispensing system. It's actually my first time working on something like this. But what this actually does is we have a refrigeration system here and we have antifreeze here and it pumps out some kind of coolant and bundle so it keeps the beer cold in like draft beer systems. So Nobody wants their beer on tap warm and right now it's not cooling. Let's see as far as right here it says we're at 32 degrees. I gotta see that seems to be what the temperature is inside here. Let's figure this out guys. One thing off the bat I can tell you is that this thing is super hot to the touch and I'm not sure if this is actually working. Okay, I just spoke with somebody from the building and they have a bar at the bar, when they try to dispense a the beer, they said it's just straight foam. Wonder if that pump is running. I think I see a frozen line. Compressor is running and I believe this 32 degrees so Condenser fan is running and the compressor so the refrigeration system is running It's very possible that this is the temperature Inside here which would make sense Condenser slightly dirty not too bad just turned off and I believe these are set to about 30 degrees and it looks like it shut down on on temperature at the right spot there's two switches here condensing unit and pump motor they're just on like it's just like straight up turn on or off I don't feel this this motor this pump running at all like it's just hot out it doesn't seem like it's running all right so considering this seems to be at temperature i'm gonna check with the thermometer i'm gonna open this top piece up quick chill seems to be an issue with something with the concentration in here with the water level or the pump and a mix of all of them watch out over here we got a we got a, we got a furnace in here See what it looks like in here guys it's my first time working on one of these the only reason i took the job is the guy sent me a picture of the model number i looked at it i'm like you know what i could probably figure that out i don't even know what's in here but i know there's some water and glycol oh man this thing doesn't want to open Okay. That's the temperature sensor. See a little sensor in here. That's probably what's reading temp. Let me see something. Temperature's coming down quick. Let's see, I'm getting 30.6 degrees. 30.2, I, I looked online, this thing is supposed to shut off about 30 degrees. So, 31 degrees, it's, it's pretty accurate. So the refrigeration part of this is running. Look, this line already defrosted. That's okay, it's, you know, it's running at a very low temperature. So that makes sense. 
I don't see any movement with this pump. Like, you would see probably something sucking and pushing. I don't see nothing, no movement in this water. This little heat exchanger is not frozen. It's just this pump is super hot. We gotta get to the electrical section in here. Nice, I got the temperature controller here. Looks like there's a ex little expansion valve in there. The red is sensor. What are all these wires? Could be just, just a terminal block. I hear this motor trying to start. Oh, there we go. I heard it trying to start, like it, like it, try, it like hummed and then it shut off. It's probably a thermal overload in here. It's gotta be this motor. Come on, give me an easy one, guys, man, cause my first time on one of these can't be too hard. It's something. It's it's gotta be this motor. I, I heard it hum and it ain't doing nothing. So let's follow this wire right here. Okay, one goes into here. And then the black. Into here. So it looks like this is the hotline, this is neutral. Goes into here. And let's see if it's sending power. Considering that it's hot, it's gotta be getting power. make sure we got power and then we'll check amps but it's just an on and off switch it's supposed to be on so it is what it is make sure there's power here all right you see we got 120 on this side but which side goes to the motor? Nope. This side. Let's see if we can get a reading. You see 120. Turn off the switch. Got nothing. Turn on the switch. 120. So this motor is getting power. I figured because it was getting hot. Let's keep it on off. This is the wire directly going to that pump. All right, let's switch it to amps. On, it's getting power and we got zero amps. Let's turn that off. Let's let that cool down. Cause I heard this thing try to start. It must've shut off on thermal overload. I told you guys this thing was super hot. I wonder if I put this Will it sense temperature on it? I mean, probably. I don't know how well. You guys can see the temperature's coming up. We're already over 103 degrees. Let's see what this does. Let's see what this tells us. You know, we're about 97 degrees ourselves, so if we feel heat, then we're, over, we're definitely over 100 degrees. So this motor is already above 126 degrees. Let's see what this does. Let's give it a chance. Already above 130 degrees. So the motor is hot, it's getting voltage, and it's not pulling amps. This is a bad motor. All right, so last thing I wanna check before condemning this motor, is there a capacitor? I didn't see one at least in there and i'm assuming this i know in here is a capacitor but that's for the compressor i don't see any capacitor for this motor this motor must be done so the pump motor is just this one only has one pump so this is a diagram that actually has two but regardless it's just a switch from the hotline to the motor and then from the motor back to neutral there's a 120 volt system right yeah both 100 
15 volts, 115, 120, same thing, guys. It's a bad pump. Can't really see it too well, but right here, because it's kind of rubbed out, it says AC motor, thermally protected. So I heard it try to come on. Probably got locked rotor, overheated, and it shut down from thermal overload. I got it on off right now, so it's not starting. Just one thing I want to see is take off these little clips and see how can this motor be changed I gotta get the part number but that's what we're gonna need to do people probably hear me talking to myself but there's a camera on my head <laughs> that they don't know about oh, this thing is gross too oh I think I broke it actually Anyways, we gotta change this right here. Probably just unclip it. Now we're gonna have to drain this tank. I wonder if this tank might need to be drained. How can I pick up the water? I don't wanna lose the water. Notice, in order to provide proper overload protection, the power pack cabinet must be level and the drain tube must be horizontal. I guess this is, okay, that's an overflow. I gotta see, like, how would that work? Like, if I pull that, isn't this thing gonna, there's water in there. Oh, there's nothing here. Oh, it would just pull and pull from here run through let me see there's an inlet and outlet for the pump probably through here somewhere it circles through there might be some water in the lines I guess we'd have to disconnect the tube and then we'll just try to catch it with a bucket and dump it back in there all right I think this thing might have cooled down a little bit. Let's try to turn this back on. 27 amps. 26 amps. And it's gonna shut off on thermal overload right there. Just shut off on thermal overload. You saw that? 27 amps, just as I suspected. Let's see. Pump motor, full load amps, 6.1. You already know that thing is lock rotor. I think it's done. All right, so this is the Cryotech Anti-Freeze Test Strips. So with this, we can actually test the glycol percentage in the water. And also, we can check alkalinity and acidity. So we do the pH test and the percentage test. So if it says right here, it says dip it in for one second, remove, shake off the excess fluid off the strip, and then at 15 seconds after doing so, then we're gonna compare the colors of the strip to these and then we'll know what's going on. But it says important, coolant must be between 50 and 140 degrees when tested. So it's at 31 degrees right now. I turned everything off. We want this to cool off a bit. So I guess we can also leave this up. So hopefully it gets a little warmer and then we can probably test it, but might take a little time for that while we wait for this to cool down it's important when we change this motor that we check all the inlets for all this stuff right here check take off these hoses and make sure nothing's clogged because this thing could have damaged from dirt as you can possibly see right in there there's like dirt there there's a bit of dirt floating around so something could have clogged the pump and caused it to fail because once again no maintenance has been done. They said this unit's only two, three years old. Well, you guys didn't take care of it. So it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. <laughs> All right, so here's a test strip. This thing looks pink and this one looks yellow. I'm gonna dip it in for a second. And let's wait 15 seconds. So here we have a first chart and it's gonna be the percentage. Starting from left to right, 
25%, 33%, 40%, 50%, 60%. I looked at the manual and we were looking for 30% levels. I think it's been about 15 seconds. I'd say it's somewhere between 25 and 33%, so this looks good. Then over here, the acidity, um, alkalinity level, acid corrosion protection. It's definitely this color right here. So these two would be unsatisfactory and these two is okay. And it's definitely in the okay range. So as far as the glyco levels, everything's good. You could definitely see the coloring in there, that's for sure. It could use a little bit of cleaning. So as far as this, we're gonna have to get a new pump motor. Specifically, I'll look this one up. It's a carbonator motor. All right, guys, we're gonna close this one up. This was definitely a fun call. So pretty much, we are needing to get a new carbonator motor and we're gonna be replacing this for the first time. We'll see how that goes. And we're gonna do a little bit of maintenance on here as the condenser coil is a little bit dirty, it's air cooled. And that's pretty much it. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.